So I make a citrus mash beer, which is an, another video, but I decided to give lemon drop hops a try because I heard, according to some reviews, it has a nice lemon background flavor. So um, this is a very simple recipe. Five kilograms of two row, 108 grams in total of lemon drop hops, one whirlflock tablet or Irish moss, and seven to 11 grams of your favorite ale yeast. In this case, it's a US05. So here I'm weighing out uh, five kilograms, but I usually do this the night before into a pail, directly into a pail. I have this mounted on a lid and I also heat up my water for the next day. So that's my typical uh, brewing setup and brew day. This is Canadian two row. So here's my water filled right up uh, past 30 liters. And that was set the night before to come slowly up to temperature to 154 Fahrenheit. And here is my milled grain. And I have an igloo cooler, about a five, five and a half gallon that I use to drain off my sparge water. And then I keep that for later for when I'm doing my uh, sparging. So I'm going to drain this down to 20 liters is what my standard is. Again, this is a very basic recipe. There's no mash in, mash out, just uh, I get good results the way I do it. So if you have your own way, that's fine. But um, again, the main point of this video is to try the lemon drop pops as a smash beer. So I'm putting together my bottom screens. So one thing I will say about lemon drop compared to citra, which is one of my favorite hops, is it's very subtle compared to citra, which is very flavor forward kind of in the beer like that's kind of the first thing you taste is and it's very bright taste whereas lemon drop to me is kind of in the background um, has that kind of lemon lime slightly sour taste which is okay it's kind of like drinking a, a corona with lime yeah, it, it, I can compare it that way if uh, that was my first impression when I, uh, I tried the final result so so I put my malt pipe in with the uh, center tube and cover on top and I'm adding my two row and slowly letting that absorb. Here's my giant paddle that's kind of oversized for a robo brew but uh, does work well. I found if you kind of rotate it like I'm doing here uh, it does a good job of mixing in the water with the uh, malt. So I just keep going with that. And I'm Always happy with the way it turns out. Uh, 20 liters seems to work well for uh, most of the brews I do. Uh, I normally do ales and uh, a Kolsch. And a, uh, I don't typically do anything more than five kilograms of grain. Um, and it seems to work well for the robo brew that I have. This is the 35 liter 3.1 model. So I'm gonna take the uh, the funnel piece and the cap off and I put my top screen on. Lately I've been using that because I feel that uh, when I'm doing my recirculation it tends to spread out the water a little more evenly than without it. So it's your own personal choice if you have this uh, brewing system whether to put that top screen on or not. So here I'm putting the recirculation arm on and then I'm going to add the silicone tube and the little adapter that I bought that helps disperse the water and spray it a little more uh, evenly during the recirculation. So this calls for uh, an hour of recirculation at 154 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually I let the uh, grain sit for roughly 10 minutes before I start the recirculation but that's entirely up to you. So I kind of try to center the sprayer over the center tube, make a, a few adjustments. You can release the, the cam lock. And then when I start my flow, I usually adjust it to pref, uh, roughly about 80% closed. So I'm just going to show you that's just a, a slight stream going in. It doesn't need a, a full spray. In my opinion, it gets too foamy. And you can see the handles I added to the lid. Uh, there's a separate video for the installation of those handles. I don't like the original handles or knobs. 
And there you can see roughly the position of the ball valve for the pump uh, line that comes in for the recirc line. Okay, so after the one hour, I'm going to take the arm off. Obviously, it's very hot. Grab it by the foam on the top. I'm going to add my handle. And I have a pulley system set up on the floor joist in my laundry room. It's an exposed ceiling, so I was able to uh, come up with this pulley system. So I just uh, pull that up and put it on the little legs. And then we're going to do our sparge. All right, so I've turned on both heaters. We're going to bring that up to a boil, but in the meantime, the malt pipe's on top, and here's my water that's been in the igloo cooler, and it's still hot. So I'm going to slowly add water and sparge the grain. Again, this is my own method. You guys have your own method of doing it, but I always get good results. So in the meantime, after I've added that water, I'm going to add uh, the first Top addition I'm going to measure out, which is the 20 grams. And you don't have to do this, but I usually scoop off the excess uh, proteins and foam off the top of the water so I can get a good view of the boil. And once I see a good aggressive rolling boil, then I know I'm going to start my timer for 60 minutes. And I'm going to add my 20 grams of lemon drop. And we'll start our timer. And I always give my uh, hops a stir. Like I add it to a spider. You can actually add it directly to the wort. But I find this a lot more convenient. I get no clogs. And uh, I tend to use that most of the time. So at 15 minutes remaining, you have to be careful when you add your uh, Irish Mosh tablet or Whirl Flock. It does give you a little bit of an eruption there, so uh, that always happens, but uh, it doesn't boil over anything. And roughly the water I started with was about 27 liters, roughly, 28 liters. Um, after I, I did my recirculation for an hour and, and sparged. So obviously there's some evaporation that happens after that. So here you can see my all my hop additions. There was one at uh, 10 minutes and another one at 5 minutes. Again, I give a little bit of a stir. And we've hit our 60 minutes, so I'm going to turn off both heaters. And I have another little pulley system to take my um, hop spider basket out and let it all drain out while I add my wort chiller and for this recipe we're going to cool it down to 176 Fahrenheit or about 80 Celsius so I'm turning on the cold water and getting the flow going and it does cool down relatively quickly it depends on the wort chiller you're using of course But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll bring it up and down a few times just to speed up the process, but it really only takes uh, well, less than 10 minutes, really. You're not cooling down that far from, uh, from boiling temperatures. So. so once it hits 176, we'll take our wart chiller out. And before I add the hops, I give it a really good uh, stir, kind of get a whirlpool effect going. So you can see if a fair amount of um, evaporation has happened. So we're going to add our 20 grams of lemon drop at 176 or 80 degrees Celsius. I give it another stir just to keep it going a little bit. And you can see the hops will uh, get dispersed properly. And We're going to do a uh, let it sit for 20 minutes after this. Let all that lemon drop goodness uh, get absorbed into the uh, wort. So for cooling the rest of the way, you have uh, several options. You could either use your wort chiller and continue going down to you know, 65 to 70 degrees or 60 to 70 degrees, whatever uh, you tend to uh, pitch your yeast at. I tend to use the 
cube method for cooling. So this is a five gallon cube. And then beside that I have a two liter growler. So anything that doesn't fit in the cube, I add to the growler as well. And then that sits overnight and cools to next day's uh, pitching temperature. So now my basement is uh, pretty cool, especially in the winter time. So I'm lucky that way. It cools down very quickly overnight. Uh, now, if you're in a warmer climate uh, and you're doing a very hoppy beer, uh, you may not want to do the cubing method. But that's entirely up to you. They say with some hoppy beers, if you do this method and it spends a long time in the cube, you could get some uh, residual bitterness or sourness. So I didn't experience that. Uh, this is not an overly hoppy beer and it uh, did end up well. So this is the method I tend to use for most of my beers. Okay, so I'm just going to store the hose there and Put the lid on, push the air out. But yeah, I usually end up filling the five gallon cube and then I move it to the back. And I add the remainder to the two liter stainless steel growler. And then they both sit and cool overnight. And I tip the uh, Brusilla a little bit forward slowly so I don't want a lot of hot matter in there but just the residual whatever is left of the wort. And always see if you're doing this method be careful there's still a liquid in the line so that has to drain out as well so you have to account for that at the end. But that's why I use a roasting pan to catch any uh, overflows or drips. So this is the next day. It's cooled down to pitching temperature. So we're in the uh, kind of mid 60s to 70 degrees. Obviously it depends on the time of year and your conditions, but uh, that's what it happens to be for this brew. So I just put a clamp there and try to keep it off the bottom because there is st still some, there always is some proteins and hot matter on the bottom. So here I am draining half of it into a pail, which I'm gonna put in my fermenter and uh, the rest half of what's remaining in the cube I will also pour into the fermenter and then try to not uh, pour in the, uh, the crap that's in the bottom. So here it's kind of sped up just to show you that I go down to about half. But yeah, I like the, uh, the cube method of cooling. It's a lot more convenient and easy and uh, gives me the same results as if I would have spent all that time uh, cooling the wort with a wort chiller. So it's entirely up to you the way you chill your wart, but this works for me. Okay, so I'm just going to take a specific gravity or density. I was expecting uh, kind of in the high 1040s, so same as my citrus mash. So I'm just draining off a little bit of the extra there and we uh, came up with around 1,048, roughly, 1,049. So this is a fast ferment conical fermenter. So whatever fermenter you use, just add your wort to it. And it's just under six gallons, turns out, so uh, that's typically what I end up with, with uh, about 23 liters. And I'm adding my USO5. Use an ale yeast if you can, or reused yeast. I, I often harvest yeast and reuse it for when I'm doing certain beer types, like my Kolsch, I just keep reusing, and I wash my yeast once in a while. So but this one I am using USO5. So you want to make sure your sealed uh, lid is on nice and tight. And I'm adding a mixture of uh, star sand into my airlock. So on day four, after active fermentation has ceased, I uh, use a hop spider here and I just drop it in after I kind of let it soak a little bit. 
So it's roughly after three or four days, like I said, after uh, the, most of the active fermentation is done, then I'm doing my dry hop. You could just throw the hops in uh, loose, but I found with this type of uh, uh, conical fermenter, it does sometimes clog in the bottom, so I'd rather have it contained. So here I've transferred it to a carboy, and I've placed it in my cold cellar, but uh, just put it in a cool area if you can. And it did dry up for about four days before I transferred to a carboy, just to let you know. So I'm going to take another specific gravity. I'm using a wine thief here to uh, take a sample. And we ended up with about 1,005. And there you see the calculation. So give or take 5.5%, uh, 5.6% 5 .5 ABV. Which is kind of roughly the same as uh, my citrus smash. And now we're going to transfer the final product into... I have a kegging system, so into my keg. And it did clear after a few days in the keg. So in terms of flavor, I'll have to say I do like citra a little bit better. It has quite a, an intense uh, citrusy lemon flavors. And uh, the lemon drop is more subtle. It's in the background. Uh, you can taste more of the biscuity taste of the two-row. And a little bit of the lemon-lime flavor. So it's uh, I would maybe add a little bit more hops uh, towards the end of the boil next time. But it turned out okay. I can encourage you to give it a try. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos and bye for now.